if you've not joined us before, um, I am Sarah Payne Quilter, um, but I'm here doing some beading because I was a beader before I was a quilter, weirdly. Um, and I was an award-winning beader, or I am an award-winning beader, but that was a long time before I did any quilting. So um, it just goes to show you don't always know what people do in their spare time, do you? But I'm delighted that um, Kitty and the team at Totally Beads let me come and play once a week because it um, it forces me to get my beading mojo on and to get my beading tools out. And as a very busy sewer, it's nice to be pushed in a slightly different direction. Um, but when you watch mine, you you will uh, see that um, obviously there's, there's quite often a sort of fabric or textile slant to, <laughs> to it. So uh, who I can see we've got a few more people come online. Victoria says, love the bright colour. There we go. And Sheila and Jitty and Camille. Uh, Camille says her go-to colour is yellow. Now, that's a good question. That's a good, that's just sparked something in my head, which is quite an interesting thought. When you are beading, do you, or any sort of your crafting, do you veer towards the clo the colours that you wear? You know, if you were just to practice with something or to work out a design, would you use the colours that you wear or your favourite colour if they're not the same thing? Okay, because um, I... I think your favourite colour isn't always the colour that looks good on you. So which of those two do you choose? That might be an interesting one for you to, to comment and let us know whether you would, you know, your favourite colour to wear is red because it looks great on you, but your favourite colour to bead with is yellow. That would be quite an interesting question. So um, uh, I can see also I've got Alison there and Annie and Dorothy. So good morning, everybody. Let's crack on with what we're actually working with today which if I go like that and like that, here we go. This is the project that I'm going to be working with today. This is a bit of macrame. So uh, Camille says, yes, golds and browns. So I just love some bright colours. But this is the project that I'm going to be making this morning. And this is a little macrame bag. Now let's just bring you in a little bit. There we go. And maybe even a little bit more. Get a nice focus on that. Okay, so this is a little macrame, you know, like an amulet purse or something like that. But you can scale this up. You can scale this up to make this into a shopping bag if you like. And actually what we've got here is uh, using the ratel and some miracle beads. So miracle beads you could use or you could use um, acrylic beads. You need something with a big hole, okay? You need something with a big hole so that you can get the cords through it. And these are 10 millimeter, uh, sorry, yeah, 10 millimeter macrame, sorry, 10 millimeter miracles. My goodness, it's like I've got somebody else's teeth in this morning. And I've used four different colors. And you can see where I brought the colors down throughout the pattern and on the other side too but you could do the whole thing in one color if you want to okay um, and that would make more of a feature I think of the of the knotting because that's what macrame is macrame is basically um, controlled knotting now uh, to make the handles I actually plaited these um, just to make it a little thicker I've used uh, I think there were one meter pieces of the cord folded in half in three different colours and then plaited together. But I ended up with this knot here, which I have to say I'm not particularly pleased with. So with my next effort, I actually did uh, I did something different with the one I'm going to show you in a minute to get rid of that knot, okay? Because I, I thought it was a little bit unsightly. If you take that away, and the problem with plaited cord is you do really need to knot it. And this ratel is also quite slippy, so you need to knot it properly, which is what I've done here. But I've knotted it and then I've tapped it with a little bit of super glue just to hold all of those in. Right, so let me just let's have a look at some comments. My favourite colour is blue and I like to use this when I'm a beading if I can choose. That's Elaine. 
Um, Lucy says, this would be so cute to hold my insulin pump. It would. And actually, it's really pretty. And you can make this much, you know, the, it, macrame can be quite time consuming, but you can go as big as you like, you know, just as long as you've got the cord. Um, Angela says, was thinking a phone. Yeah, a little phone would go in there. Obviously, you'd want to make it bigger. I've actually used eight strands. So you see they're in pairs eight strands so if you wanted to make it twice the size you would use 16 strands so you can always go oh where are we will this video be available for catch up later oh by the way if you have any questions please put the letter q in front of your um comment and if you've got a tip put a letter the e so that we know it's a tip so it just makes it a little bit more obvious so that we can make sure that I answer all of the questions and queries. Um, could you have left the knot with fringe for a tassel? Yes, I could have done. So I've actually left a tassel on the bottom here and I could have tasseled it there too and had that, if I'd have thought of that, that would could have been an, a nice finish with it too. But actually with the one we're going to do in a little bit, you can see there's no visible connection there at all. All right, but we'll come back to that. So looking at the supplies that I'm using, first of all, clipboard, clipboard, very useful, or a picture frame, an empty picture frame, uh, because what we do need to do is we need to secure this. So when I'm working on it, I found a clipboard was nice and easy like that so that I've got my hands free for knotting but um, you could put it onto an old picture frame. And I was talking to Paul about this and he said, you could take an old picture frame and just put a nail in it or one of those hooks and sort of wrap that around it, around the hook into the picture frame so that it's nice and secure because you haven't got enough hands to knot it and to hold it at the same time. Um, Smoffy says, my favorite colors seem to be in transition phase. I was always about the pinks, purples, blues, but now drawn to more fiery colours, reds, oranges and yellows, but also obsessed by rainbows. <laughs> Bless you. Um, Dorothy says empty picture frame is a good idea for dodgy fingers. Yes, it just because you're going to need two hands to knot. Now, it looks very complicated, but it isn't. It's one simple knot and it's called a square knot. But let's first of all have a look at the supplies that you're going to need when you're going to be um, when you want to work with these okay so let me take you to the website so there we go this is the totally beads website and whenever you look here you will see in the top right hand corner all of the video tutorials so every day at 10 a.m there's a video tutorial and you can see them all listed here OK, so this goes back weeks and weeks, well, nearly a year now, I think. So um, the latest one is always at the top. So we just click on here. So macrame bag and there you go. And this is quite an inexpensive project, as you can see there. So this is the Rattail uh, bundle um, and in it you will get five skeins, each um, 10 metres long. I think it's 10 metres. Hang on. I was pretty sure it was 10 metres. So, is it 10 metres or 5 metres? Yes. No, that's miracle, 10 millimetre. It's quite a lot in there anyway. I can't remember. I can't remember. It did say when I opened the packaging. But um, you've also got those miracle beads there in different colours. And as I said, 10 millimetres are the back. OK, I've got a question for Angela saying I've got captions which are auto generated at the bottom of my screen. How do I get rid of it? So um, I'm not sure where they're appearing. Yes, I can't. Uh, Angela, I, I, I don't know where your captions are appearing. I don't have any captions. Yes, so uh, Angela just asked if, if uh, she said she had some captions appearing, but I'm not, um, 
I'm not sure. So uh, Kitty has shared a link to this anyway. And there is 10 metres on a hank, which Kitty has just confirmed. Thank you, Kitty. I thought there was. I knew I'd seen that somewhere. But anyway, you've got in here a selection of colours and you've got a selection of um, miracle beads. You don't have to use the beads with it, but I think they add a really nice feature to it. Um, then also uh, you've got a variety of colours in each bundle as well. So I started off with the purple bundle, which is that one. And I'm going to be using the monochrome one today, which is that one. So I'm good to go. Now, as I said, you need something with a big hole. So 10 millimetres is just about the right size um, because um, the, um, the beads need to be big enough so that you can get... Uh, your strands through the eye 40 millimeter work as well but then you start to you'll need to do more knots to work around them okay but then sometimes it's a trial and error um mina says if i put a few beads and a knot on either side will it stay as i'd love to use rat tail for our sacred thread um yes i believe it would but the the thing with the rat tail is it is quite um quite slippery okay but super glue dab a little dab of super glue because i'm going to show you that um i find i find when uh when things slip too much a bit of super glue would be fabulous so let's have a look at the hands uh joe says funnily enough i've plenty of miracle beads i'll grab some rat tail and have a go you certainly should do you definitely should right so here we go this is that this is the project all right and we're actually going to do something called a square knot all right so i'm going to show you on a little strand that i've got here let's just bring you in a little bit you nicely there we go right so this is actually a square knot all right and it's and this is just with uh this is just a sample so just to show you so that you can get your head around it this is the knot that we're using and this is why we have a clipboard okay because the clipboard is easy just to hold the bit of work that I'm working on all right so and I'll show you in the bag we're going to work on the bag in a little minute but I wanted to just show you the basis of the stitch and this is using just four strands when we come to do ours we're going to be using eight strands and the reason for that is this takes with just four strands it would take you ages to make a bag whereas with eight strands you can um you can make it quite quickly Okay, so you have your central core thread just here. And, oh, there we go. Let's move that up a little bit. You've got your central core and that sits in the middle all of the time. And we are working around it. So you'll notice when you're working that your outside pieces get much shorter very quickly. All right, I do start... Um, I, I do tend to start with everything the same length and I'm over generous with the amount of thread I use because it's a nuisance if you run out. But the way I remember how to do this is I think P's and Q's, please, you know, P's and Q's, mind your P's and Q's. All right. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take the right hand side of my thread and pop it over the top so it looks like a letter P. And then this one goes over the top again. Hold on. Let's just move right so there's letter p it looks like a letter p now we we do the first part of the p first and then the side and then basically what happens is if you're holding it this bottom piece of the p goes under and through so your center core stays this is why you need to have a board because trying to do this one-handedly is a bit of a nuisance and you pull it tight all right then if i go q so this is letter q 
they come down the side I do tend to tip it as well I have it at an angle like this so I sort of wedge it against my body and then have a cushion underneath it because it is easier to do this at an angle but when I tried to set that up for photography it was an absolute nightmare so I've got my letter Q and then again the thread goes under everything and through the ball of the letter Q I like to keep my bits straight and then pull them tight like that all right so P down and under and this is called a square knot and the square knot is in two pieces the P and the Q if you get lost and you think how on earth which one am I supposed to be doing next um, the last stitch you did, so we did a P there, makes a bulge on the other side. So just here, there's a little bulge. So I always remember that the bulge is going to be on what I'm doing next. All right. So this will put a bulge on the other side. So there we go. So now I've got a bulge over there. And let's see if I can be really fancy and really come in with that. See, playing with my new, playing with my new tech. So you can see each side you'll get a bold depending on whether you're doing a P and a Q. And you can practice just with a little piece like this. Just give that a go with four strands. Um, and then when you come to the bead, you slide the bead up here, bring the threads around the edge. Let's go out a little bit again. So you put your bead in the centre, these come round and you knot them underneath and you can see it grabs it there like that. So let's go back. I always tie a knot on the end of one of the working cords. That's that's a good tip actually, Chris, if you do that because then you will remember which way you've uh, you've got it sorted. So Angela's lost her, her, <laughs> her captions. I didn't know if that was something I was doing. Hmm. So, um, I always tie a small knot, yeah, because obviously when that comes over there, once it comes out the side, that's now your working cord for the other side. And Angela says, remember the P's and Q's. Yep, so make a letter P, and then the other side, you make a letter Q. All right, so let's go to the bag then, and I'll show you what I've done so far. So, as I said, these need to be worked in pairs. And what I've actually done is I have um, uh, plaited. You could actually, um, you could actually macrame the handle as well. That would be quite nice. And actually, you know, I just said the, the, the square stitch, the square knot is done in two. So you do your P and then your Q so that you get something like that. That's little Shambhala bracelet. You can make it into a bracelet if you just want to do one single one. Again, that's with, this is with the acrylic beads and um, the rat tail from the pink bundle. Um, but if you just do P or just do Q, you get a twist like this, which is rather spectacular. And that could make a really nice handle for you as well. So, as I said, in the first one that I did, which was this one, I ended up with this rather ugly bit up there. It was suggested we could make a tassel with that. I wish I'd thought of that. That would have been much nicer. But I ended up with this rather unpleasant lump. Um, so what I did with this one is I actually plaited it and then I have glued the two ends of my plait together and put them inside so they're invisible. They are quite stiff now because I've used super glue. <laughs> um, Lucy says that twisty one looked cool. It does, doesn't it? That's rather fab. I'm rather pleased with that. Um, and that would just make a lovely, you know, friendship bracelet for one of the kids. You know, boys who don't like to wear jewellery, but a little friendship tie bracelet like that or these little shambalas. Really fun. But um, yeah, so I've super glued that and then it's given me a nice, it's kind of a byproduct, a byproduct. It's given me a nice um, tight edge to work with. OK, so I've made a start in my other one. So let me just clip that into my board. 
And the nice thing about having a board like this is that um, I can adjust it. And you can see these are ridiculously long. I think I cut a metre and then uh, did it in half. So these are much, much longer than it needs to be. And then I'll just take these two off so I can show you again. To attach them to my handle, I've got two strands of each and I fold them in half. And then just get those ends together. So they're folded in half like that. And then we're just basically creating a slip knot. Mina's just asked how to do this one. All I did was P, 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 P. So every stitch went like this and it just naturally twists. That's it. Uh, Lucy is correct. I think she just did the P's and not the Q's and that's it. It just naturally does that on its own as you're working down it, it twists. So we've popped our first strand on there and then I'm going to put my dark strand. And as I said, you can make these in one colour if you want to. Right, so I've just done that in half and then that one goes on there. And we pull that tight. And you can see I've started off, excuse me, <clears throat> just grabbing a cup of coffee voice starts to go after a while so we're working them in color pairs all right at the moment so the first two I've done two knots two knots two knots and then here I'm going to do two knots now I've just shown you in my other example where I was working with two center strands and one either side now because we're doing this thicker I'm going to separate them out and I've got four of my centre core and two either side. So it's exactly the same. All right, so I'm going to put that over the top to do my P. Actually, let's just move that camera out a little bit now. There we go, you can see a little bit more. So that's making my P. And this comes down the side of the P, this one. And then it goes underneath and we knot it around our centre core. I like to keep my colours straight. And then we just, you do, you can get quite a speed up on it once you've got going. But I need to make sure that everything stays nice and tight. So for the beginning, pull that tight. Right, so there's my P. And then I'm going to do a Q. So the Q comes over up underneath. I think with this one, you just have to pay a little bit more attention because you've got double the strands. So there's my Q. And now I'm going P. coming underneath so this was related to the tip earlier about having a knot in each end I don't need a knot because I've got two colours so I know that I'm always working with the black as the loop in my letter so I've done two sets of square because remember a square knot is done twice once with a p and once with a q so mind your p's and q's right so there we go there's our first row done and i like to do a full row um like this um because it get, makes everything nice and secure 
So Lucy says, I've seen things like hanging plot parts done in macrame and wall decor. You can make some really lovely things with it. You can. And actually, it's a very basic stitch and you can personalise it. And actually, I really like the way it feels. I keep finding myself sort of just running my fingers down it like that. So that's one there. And you want to repeat on the other side. So here's another another one I've gone a little bit further now we were just talking earlier about um this is a sort of shiny cord so um it does have a tendency to slip undone um and because this was traveling I didn't want it to slip undone in my bag because when I take it out again it's all come unraveled once you've finished and get all the way to the end it's not going to so what I actually did was <laughs> I put a little tiny dot of super glue just on the end of my knot uh, so if you are doing something where you are concerned was it was it Mina who asked about the beads I'm not sure who asked about um, sacred beads you could actually make sure it's extra secure just with a little tiny dot of super glue be careful not to glue to yourself all right so we've done the first row now what I need to do, so I've done the first four. If I carry on like this, I'll just end up with four strands, which um, won't make much of a bag. So what I need to do now is I need to, I'm going to separate those out and go over there just for now. And I need to take these four. So my white four are going to the edge, taking the grey and then taking these ones and making another pair. All right, so now I'm going to knot in between here and here so let's sort out two to be a cord and then this is going to be my working thread so this is going to be my p and that's going to be the edge of my p all right so i tend to spend a moment you know just getting myself organized so that i can see what i'm doing Right. So if you always need to make sure you lay down the part of the P first because you've got your core. The P goes over the top of the core and then the side of the P goes over the top of everything. All right. And then that tucks underneath there. And we've done one half. Of our. Knot. Let's just pull that tight. And then bring them down again. Still the core stays the same. And my Q, because I'm watching my P's and Q's, goes over and under. Again, I would have this at an angle just because it makes it a little easier to manage. But I couldn't get the camera work to work on it as a at an angle and then pull it and tighten so that everything tightens up around the top it's just a matter of keeping under control with those so one and then I'm going back to a P So do do your best to keep those out of the way because you will. Um, Mina says, yes, I did ask about beads for sacred threads. Definitely will use super glue. <laughs> Just be careful that the super glue doesn't come too far down, um, that you're only, you're only gluing things you've already knotted. Because if you get it on the strand, um, you get it, you'll make the strand of rat tail stiff and harder to work with all right so i pulled that need to pull that down now the nice thing about this cord so it's 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 a positive and an and a sort of not so positive it's quite slippy which means you have to pull it very tight um which hence the the super glue um but it does mean it's very forgiving because you can slide the knots up and down so i can do that which with normal cord i wouldn't be able to sort that out 
with normal macrame core because it would be too stiff. So there you go, you can see I've got two more sets of knots. So let me go back to my other set because I've got a bit further along with that one. So at the moment we're just working with the front and the back, which I would suggest you do both at the same time. So you do your front and your back pieces together. And then we will start, when you get a little bit further down, attaching the sides. All right, so here we go. I've got one here where I have done, that's the first, the first set of knots that was out of the way. So the um, working with plain has its benefits because you can see the pattern. OK, you can see the pattern really easily. Working with different colours makes it easier to see which chords you're using next and to keep them separated out. So it doesn't really matter if you mix them up, but you need to keep them separated out if you want this sort of line, this kind of stripe to run down, down there to pay attention. So I'm going to add a bead now. And I'm going to, I'm not going to add a bead at the side. Um, hang on. So the first thing I'm going to do with the side is I'm going to add some knots to this side piece. Otherwise, we'll just have a long strand sitting there. So I'm just going to do a knot over here. So there's my centre cord. And then we do our P. And actually with these, you can if you want to clip them under the board like that that's why I thought a clipboard was quite quite useful so I've got two on one side two on the other and then I've got my center core which is four of them so if you've never done anything like this before I would suggest having a go just do a little practice strand about that long with four strands in a single color um, doing your P and your Q. If you just do your P's, you get a twist. If you get a P and a Q, you get flat like that. Just have a play because this cord is nice. You can unpick it really easily and reuse it. All right. So just get your head around the stitch. And then you can personalize it however you want. Now, pull that tight. So this one. Uh, because I've got stitches here and here, but not on the end, it means we end up with a strand, which is right. Okay, there'll be sort of a, a little extra. And then we go to the grey, so I'm doing the Q, P and Q. Come up and pull. Tug, make sure everything's nice and tight. So and I'm a P. That goes under everything and through the ball of the letter. So basically, when you look at the knot, the one that you've made the P with goes from underneath over and through, and the other one goes over and through. So if you remember the P and Q, it will sort that out for you. <laughs> and then I'm doing my Q. So I've done my double. For a more lacy effect, I'm doing two P's. Uh, I'm doing two square knots, so two lots of P's and Q's. But if you want to make it more lacy, you could do perhaps four sets. And if you do four sets, each section will be about that long. So... Uh, Lucy said, I made a, uh, a macrame hematite bracelet, bracelet for a male friend. He loved it and never takes it off. Made me feel proud. Now, that's the best That's the best thing you can get, isn't it, Lucy? When you make something for somebody and they absolutely adore it. So, I've done my knots there. Move that out of the way. And then I'm going to come into the centre one. So, I'm going to pull these back because they're currently tucked under there. Now, um, I was looking at this yesterday and thinking this feels quite like lace making. Um, 
except lace making is a lot more complicated because I've tried that and I couldn't get to grips with it. My mum makes lace, but um, I can't quite cope with it. Uh, it's all the, I know you only have to count to four, but oh, it's very hard to keep track of. With this, we only have to do one stitch. We're only doing a P or a Q. Okay, that makes our, our knot. So I've got my centre core again. Now I'm going to put a bead in here. So I'm going to go, I'm going to do my P and my Q. There we go, pull that nice and tight. So we're back to doing this centre core down here and you can see where the pattern starts to build. And my Q. I'm going to do one of those. Sometimes you have to pay attention to which stitch is which. See, that's coming undone slightly. Pull that and then. So the whole time we're just doing P's and Q's. Right, so now I'm going to add my bead. So I've got a selection of different colours here. Actually, I think that turquoise would be rather, rather fun against the monochrome. Um, I do have some silver acrylic beads and I have some white miracle beads, but I thought a pop of colour would be rather fabulous. So this is one of the options on the page. Now, these do have... A decent size hole but it's not big enough to get four strands through so I've been doing it with two all right so I'm going to take one black and one white I'm going to chop off the end because I need it nice and stiff uh, Diane has a question there. She said, have you start, that's the wrong scissors, have you started the bag with an even or odd number of strands? It needs to be even. So I've got eight because I've got them in pairs, but to make it wider, I could do 12, um, I could do 16, you know, um, but it does need to be, uh, in order to get this pattern, it does need to be an even set. So very good question. So I'm going to take these through here. And I've just cut off the ends and I've got my two strands. Again, you'll be beading, you'll be um, putting through the beads the same two threads as you work down on a particular row. So you might benefit from a little bit of super glue or nail varnish on the end there to make it pointy to get them both through. You do need to put two through in order to keep everything um, level. But you see that does, it does actually go through there. All right. So now pop that up there at the top. Oh my goodness. Can you see how that colour pops? Isn't that luscious? All right. So now I'm going to take, I've got three on this side and three on that side. That is fine. Okay, so I'm still using the same number of strands. It's just I've only got two in the core now and I've got three on the outside. So I'm going to do the same thing again. P, my letter P, there we go. With the side here and then the, those three will go underneath and through and we're going to pull so keep the core nice and tight tighten that and now I'm going to do the cue for the other side of the square knot to secure it and actually I do find it easier once I've got going to do it as I say, holding away from the edge like that. And get, pull that nice and tight. And now I'm going to go back to doing two at a time. 
okay because I only need that in there to hold that particular bead all right so nice and tight and it might be Mina that that's the point with your uh, sacred beads where you actually want to just put a dot of glue on the bottom there to stop that but as I said only a tiny dot because with super glue in these cords if you're not careful you put a dot there and it kind of leaches down and then everything gets a little bit stiffer but even then you can work with it because you can kind of crack the the um the the, the bit Joe says wooden beads would be good for this they've got bigger holes and give a more retro look definitely wooden beads ceramic beads anything with a big hole and if it's got a bigger hole than these 14 mil sorry these 10 mil then you could probably get all four of your strands through it so now I'm going to do the next one on this side so we'll do that again so again I'm going to move those out of the way I've got my bead in there I'm quite happy with that I'm going to separate out my colours, so I've got four greys, there we go, pop those off to the sides, I've got two white, two greys, and you'll tend to find that two of them will come, they'll want to be the centre cores. OK, so that obviously they're coming out the, the previous stitches. So I'm going to do a knot as normal to bring these two together. So round as a P with that side. I did think actually as well, perhaps a bulldog clip on the ends of these ones that you're not working on might be quite useful because that will then be weighted. So and then I'm just going to bring this one through. First part of the square. And this is just one pattern you can do with uh, macrame. You know, there are other stitches and other knots. I'm just doing a very simple um, square knot. And in my head, I always call it the P and Q knot. I'm probably the only person who calls it that, but it helps me remember. I didn't pull that tightly enough. There we go, pull that tight. And then pull this one tight. But the nice thing about, as I said, this, the slippiness of these cords is that if I've got a loop like I have there, I can just give it a pull and it's going to slide through nicely. Right, so there we go. That's nice and secure. Grab two of those centre cords. Grab a bead. And Smoffy says a macrame board would make things a lot easier. You know, I've never actually, I've never actually seen a macrame board. Might have to get one. <laughs> I haven't used Miracle Beads in macrame, but I'm going to now because they look great. They do look great. They've got a real splash of colour to them. Um, so with the wooden bead... I'm just cheating there a little bit. I'm just licking the end. But this is just for me, so nobody needs to... I don't need to worry about anybody else coming into contact with that. But... Oh, that one's fraying. It doesn't want to go in. Let's cut it. Straight and pinch them together. There we go. That might work. Once they go, they do go through quite nicely. But that white one just wants to keep fluffing up. A little bit nail varnish, as I said. Yeah, I think the Miracle Beads give it quite a modern look. Hang on, I'm just taking these out of shot just so that I can see it a little bit closer. Because, um, oh, hang on, oh, drop the beads. You see, this is what happens. I have to go with my spectacles to try and get small things through small things. Come on, play nicely. I can honestly say I've not had this much problem doing any of them. 
Um, Dorothy says you can get notch ones in two different sizes for this kind of project. I think I would grab, oh, there we go. See, it goes in eventually. Please go all the way through. We get there eventually. See, glasses go back up again. Old lady eyes. Right. So, and again, we're doing the triple. So, P and Q. Pull that tight. Done my P, and you can see that's securing it nicely. And then I'm just going to do the Q. And just pull that nice and tight and secure it. Pull those core down, core ones down again. So they're nice and tight, and that's nice and tight. So you could put another, there would be one bead in there, one in here, one in here. And you probably could get a third one in the side. I think I did, yes, I did three in this one. So I left the sides sort of free, but each one has got three in there. And you can see where I've come down. So I've done two sets and then I brought in, I think actually I might... I might have gone a little further down. So that's the first row. That's the thing. I did a second row of that in between on this one. So I started the beads a little bit, um, uh, a little bit higher. Let's have more beads. So once you've come out of those and you've done another row of beads, you'll just go back to what you were doing before. All right. So we take these two colours. And those two you would weave together. So you do your P and your Q, P and your Q uh, all the way along, which is here. And what we're doing is each time we're moving between those strands, we're creating sort of this gap in there. All right. So that's what we're doing. We're making those when we move. So we've got those two. We bring them together. We separate them out. We bring them together. We separate them out. So. Um, and then adding those beads. Now, at this point, you do want to attach the front to the back of your bag. All right. So what I would do is get both of your bags to a similar point. All right. So that you've got really got to grips with your with your knot. You know exactly how your your piece is going. Now, when you start making these, let's bring you back in a little bit. Let's see if we can. All right, when you start making your loop, you know we pass the loop over the top. What that does is the back of the top loop, I'll just turn them over, you'll see they look slightly different. Can you see on that side, the colour is solid together, whereas this side, your strands are separated. All right, so this side actually looks neater. So when you finished, it's actually the um, other side of your bag that you're going to want to see. So this is the back side. This is the front side as I was making it. And you see along here, it's not quite so neat. Along there, it's much more solid. And that's because the two, the four strands sit together on that side. On that side, you've got two strands and two strands because the other strand comes out the middle. So it looks a little bit disjointed. So you have to decide how you're going to finish it before you start putting it together. All right, because basically we need to be, well, actually you don't need to decide. You just have to do it this way. We are going to be putting it together 
with the wrong side face with the with the with the working side outwards okay so when you're looking at these two what you've got to do is make sure that this one you turn over when you work them together all right so you will work and turn work and turn work and turn all right because when you finished you'll actually turn it all inside out which feels a little odd but you will actually turn it inside out so that was the work side because the work side isn't so neat now what i did was i left a fringe on the bottom which is quite nice um but obviously when i turned it inside out the fringe all ended up on the inside so i had to poke the fringe through so there's still a bit in there that's the fringe so what you need to do is basically come down to the bottom and poke all of those fringe bits out through the base all right because obviously as i said it's the other way around but if you knot it off and again i would when you finish this bag because of the rattle it's got that lovely sheen um it does make it slippy it looks fabulous but it does make it slippy so um what you need to do is when you do your knots your finishing knot is dab them with as i said a little bit of nail varnish or a little bit of super glue because otherwise they will come undone and you'll put something in your bag and it will come out the bottom okay and we really don't want that but to put the sides together i don't know if i've done enough on this actually to put the sides together so we'll just uh hang on we'll just imagine all right because i've got the same on this side so we're going to put i'm going to put these sides together here and here now the other thing that i did on the first one was when i put my colors in place and i worked on that one when i did the second one i did the colors in the opposite direction because they're going to be back to back so when i loaded them up i did my uh, instead of going purple mulberry pink lilac i went lilac pink mulberry purple so that they would come together like this down one side okay which is one way to look after one way to uh, to look at it so that the sides all match but to be honest once i've made it i thought i don't think that really makes a difference so i didn't do it with this one i just repeated the colors so they will be opposite i quite like that so when this is finished that's the side that you're going to be looking at which um basically you'll just take your beads and just pop them like that so that they sit proud on the other side but when we come to construct them i need to put it so that i have got my working sides on the outside so that's the working side as you can see you've got your strands separated all right so then let's do the other one that's my working side all right now this is a little fiddly And again, we need to get our clip and clip everything. But now we're going to be working with one piece from the front and one piece from the back. So this is how you work the sides. You'll take one from the front and one from the back. And then um, we'll just work the front as normal and the back as normal and then the sides together. So let me just tighten those off because, as I said, they do sometimes slip. So with that one, I'm going to start. I want my white down the side. No, I don't. I want my black down the side. So that's going to be the black one. The white, that second piece of white down there is going to be worked on the back of the bag. And on this side, I've got the white one. So what this will do, because we haven't started working together from the top, you see, that's where we've got this section so the further down you get before you join it together the bigger that that section is going to be okay all right so i'm going to separate out again so i've got my double core and i'm going to start with my p actually let's zoom you back out a little bit Right, so you can see the whole stitch. Right, 
So I've got my P and I've got my Q. Well, I've got my P first. So this is the side piece, all that tight. And then my Q. And then my P. So it's just one, it's just one stitch a square stitch because it does create straight square edges I also resisted the temptation to put any beads down the sides um, but you could if you wanted to have beads down here as well you can see I chose not to because I just thought it was easier to work those side pieces but um, we could actually have perhaps a bead in this one as you can see, you've got an odd and even number of, of spaces. So anyway, so now I need to do uh, my, hang on, which one was I? Let's do the Q. need to pull these a little bit tighter now I've got a loop there which is a bit of a nuisance so what that's from the previous stitch so what is nice is this is easy to unpick or adjust because as I said it's a slippy cord there we go so you see that's done that nice and tight and now we've started to create the side of the bag so we've got that set there and then now I've got to just make sure that I'm only working with the cords from the front of the bag all right because obviously the back of the bag is attached now and I don't want to accidentally pick up say for example these two because they're on the back of the bag if I did that I'd actually be sealing my bag closed so actually what I'd be putting in here is yeah looking at this I should have done that before I put my bead in because the bead that's why I've only got two across there. I should have done my side piece before I did that, that bead in there because that should work into that. So let's rotate it and do it the other way so you can see from this side because I haven't put any beads in there yet. So that's my side connector. Those can move out of the way. These are the first two on here. And so that's all the back of the back. That's all the, the back and the bits I don't care about. I've got four, I'll make my cord. There's my letter P. Come through. As I said, you do need to pay attention because now we've got twice as many cords because we've got the front and the back of the bag. And if you do end up attaching the front and the back together anywhere apart from the sides, you will be annoyed with yourself. So let's pull that tight. Slip that up. Back and pull my cord tight again. So as I said, I kept these very long. They don't need to be this long, but um, because I haven't decided whether I'm going to do a fringe at the bottom. 
Uh, Papa says I can see me getting into a right tangle. You can do, but then all you need to do is just stop and sort everything into sets of four. Okay, because there we go. I've done the next set of that part of the bag. And then when I've gone all the way across, I'll come back and I'll take these two black pieces and I will attach those to these two, uh, those two, four. So those four and those four will be attached together. And then those four and those four will be attached together. So that's the front and the back. And then after we've done that row, we'll come back and we'll take these two and attach them together. So those will keep going down the side of the bag. So that's what this is here. So attached, attached to each other, attached to the front and the back, attached to each other, attached to the front and the back. All right, and you continue down the sides and you're adding your beads as you go along. And you can put more beads. You could actually have double rows of beads. So you're just doing a square knot at the top and at the bottom of each set. But I chose to separate them to the two sets of square knots. And then when I came to the end, as I said, when I stitched all of this, this is what it looked like. All right, so with all of those tassels and you can see, and then what I did was I took each pair from the front and the back. Now this was complicated, but obviously these strands were a lot shorter by then. But I took a strand from the front and a strand from the back and tied a double knot. So all the way along the bottom, the front and the back were laced together. All right, that was a bit, that did take me some time because obviously there's lots of different colours there and lots of different pieces. But again, I wouldn't worry too much about that because that's going to be on the inside. So I've knotted all of these up um, and then you can put a spot of glue on them just to hold them. Um, again, not too much glue because it does wick up, um, but a spot of glue on each knot and then either cut it short, which means you'll end up with a bag that looks like that. Um, or keep them long and then when you turn it through if you've cut it short that just basically finishes and you've got a neat knotted section on the bottom um, with this obviously I then had to pull through all of these these um, these pieces all of these little bits on the end there and then what you could do is you could take you could perhaps keep that a little longer and put miracle beads on the ends here so you've got a beaded fringe and just do one at a time so you could um do one at a time and do a knot i would do a knot at the beginning and a knot at the end and perhaps not do every one because that'll be that'll be about that big by the time it's all full of miracle beads or you could have one set of uh, tassels that are that long with your miracle beads and then a slightly longer tassel with miracle beads so you've got graded tassel you could grade your tassel so that it comes into a point and looks sort of almost sort of north american with that kind of design there um, and really you can play around with it and do whatever you like so just for these pieces here i did two sets of square knots so pq pq um, and then took the next two threads or two colours and brought them in together to do another row. And with the miracle beads, because the eyes, the eyes are quite large, but they're not large enough to have four threads go through them. So I put two through them and then you've got a slightly bigger knot on the bottom because you've got three either side. Um, and just keep going down the edge. And where I've done that, you can see. There's the pattern as it comes in and out. As I said, you can add beads wherever you like, wherever you want to. And um, I quite like this ombre effect as we go down, but I'd quite like to have a go at it um, just with a single colour. I think a single colour, you'll see the pattern more, but it'll be less forgiving about mistakes because they'll be obvious. Uh, whereas this is kind of, this kind of hides all of your all of your silly little bits and pieces that, that have gone a bit wrong. Um, but there we go. We've got a lovely little tassel bag with some beads in it. Um, you could just put something small in it or you could make it, you could carry on going and make a shopping bag. Now, something this size, I used four colours 
and I used about two meters of each okay and I did end up cutting off about that much so there was quite a bit of quite a bit of waste from each strand because I wasn't quite sure how far the cord was going to go but it actually went a lot further than I thought so but the thing is it's quite tricky to add more cord now the other thing that you could do is you could actually it will be very fiddly but if you take it off your cord and wrap it around to make a ball like this and then hold the ball with an elastic band so it almost becomes like a lace making bobbin gives you weight uh, you can use that but you do have to then be tucking it through your p and your q every time so let's do a color that doesn't just disappear into my top so so there we go there's the purple one so that way you could just keep it with your elastic band. You could keep it the length you needed it. And then when you finish, just chop it off and there'll be no waste. But as I said, you will have to keep passing that through. So you do want to secure it with an elastic band. Otherwise, it's just going to unravel and you're going to end up in a whole pickle of hurt. So um, as you can see in here, I've got quite a few different bits and pieces that I grabbed. Um, I did. That's the little plait that I did for uh, the cord, for the original cord, just to practice. Um, yes, Moffy says you could use the Kumahimo uh, bobbins as well. Yeah, but they tend, I think they tend to be a little bit bigger, don't they? And you've got to be able to pass it through your P and your Q. I can't remember off the top of my head. I'm sorry, I'm going to grab some coffee. Mm. But the thing is, you work out your own way. So... First of all, recommendations. I recommend that you start with a little piece, which I've lost, but here we go. A little piece just to have a practice with your square knots so that you can see what they look like. And that's what they're going to look like. Uh, Joanne says they look fun. I've got a few nieces that would love a little bag. I think I'm going to be busy. Definitely. Definitely. So I would have a practice with this just with the four strands. So that you get used to the idea and actually, you know, you can do it without a clipboard, but it is trickier because you've got to keep moving everything. So a clipboard like that or a picture frame or something like that, that you can actually just pop in the top. That's good. Also, um, judicious use of... Um, Super glue can be quite useful. And as I said, I use that with the top. I did my weaving all the way round and then I had a big knot on either end and I just added super glue between the two pieces there and then snipped the knots off. Um, so you can see the ends, the ends will be quite stiff, but that gives me a nice support for the bag handle as well. And there we go. We just keep going. And remember, you keep adding down the sides. You're working in pairs of colours. And then adding the beads when you want to. And you can make yourself a little beaded, a little beaded bag or a big beaded bag. I mean, this could be, if you scale this up, it could be a shopping bag. It might take you quite a while to do a little um, a shopping bag <laughs> with, uh, with stitches this small. But um, it's good fun. It is good fun. And um, apart from just thinking PQ, PQ, or just making a note of which one you're looping. So with the colours, it's easy. Um, I think we did have the, the tip earlier. Um, who, I'm not quite sure who the tip was from, but about tying a knot in the end, if you're doing a single colour, because that's the one you're always looping. That's, uh, that's good. So... Again, thank you very much for joining me for another another Wednesday and another tutorial. Um, I hope that you're going to have a play with macrame with these gorgeous sort of colourway bundles that you've got in here. Um, you could make it, as I said, in a single colour or you can mix them with these. Uh, you just need to make sure that you're doing an even number of chords, okay, or an even number of pieces of rattel because you're working 
in pairs. Um, it gets you, you'll get a different design if you work with an odd number. Um, and I would suggest that you try that for your second one rather than your first one, because it's really easy to get in a little bit of a pickle. Because I mean, um, that's what I'm looking at now. But what I do do is when I brought these with me here today, I had them clipped into my clipboard. I'll just show you. like that so they're clipped in there so they don't sort of run around and get knotted inside my bag so thank you very much for joining me everybody i can see you're all saying goodbye now um i hope you have a good day i will see you hopefully god willing back here uh next wednesday with some more projects um thank you again to kitty and simon and the guys um for um, putting together some cracking got a nice discount on the, the rattle the 20 percent off the cord which will really help get you going and the miracle beads and the, the link is there at the top of the page so um as i said thank you again for joining me and i will see you all again soon keep beading keep warm and keep safe see you later